In this video, we're going to look at using external still images of gradients to expand the functionality of your LZX system. This technique gives a lot of flexibility to a small system. It can also be used to drive really complex results in a larger system. This somewhat complicated patch shows some of the complexity that's possible. Over the course of this video, we'll break down the uh, constituent parts of what's going on here so you'll understand better. All of the animation that you see going on in this patch is driven by the incoming gradient ramp. This ramp is a still image, and it's not being animated in any way by the memory palace. Using gradients is a foundational technique for LZX patching. The built-in ramps are a great example of a gradient, and many of the expedition modules are designed to work with gradient inputs. So instead of using a simple ramp in this case, we're using a gradient that was generated in the Adobe program Fireworks. You can also create gradients using Photoshop, Illustrator, 3D programs, or virtually any digital imaging solution. So along with the release of this video, we'll be releasing three packs of advanced gradients, but I encourage you to also try and make your own. In terms of inputting to the system, you can use the Memory Palace, you can use uh, any media player that can play back a still image, or just play it off your computer. So in this patch, we start with this basic ramp you can see on screen. Playing this back from the Memory Palace with no animation or other effects, I'm driving it out into a passage. The passage is summing this with LFOs coming from the prismatic ray and the pendulum. Those two signals are in turn going out to a crossfader and to a keyer. This is where you get that animation effect. So wherever the gradient is black and wherever it's white, you start to see movement in between those areas. One of the great things about this effect is that by switching out the gradient, you get a completely different image on the screen. This is really handy if you're playing a live show because you might not have an opportunity to repatch in between songs or in between sets. So by allowing yourself to flip through these different gradients and get a whole slew of different effects, it minimizes the amount of patching and repatching you have to do. Additionally, you can get very complex results very quickly. This is always a good thing when you're performing live. So flipping through some of these gradients, you start to get a lot of different animation available just at the push of a button. So now that you've seen some of the complex things that this technique can do, let's look at the basics of how it works. Simple gradients are built into the LZX visual cortex. These are available at the different ramp outputs. So here we have a basic diamond ramp. The diamond shape of it is not super apparent until you start to put it into a keyer. So once we key that diamond gradient, the shape starts to become obvious. And as we sweep through the threshold, we get different size diamonds. So basically what this is doing is it's sweeping from the black part of the image to the white part of the image, and it creates our diamond shape. This is a very basic LZX technique you're probably hopefully familiar with. Uh, but so what starts to happen when we plug in more complicated gradients? Well, we get more complicated results. But the idea is the same. As we move the threshold, we're moving between the black and white parts of the image. And so this lets us take black and white images and use them to generate animation. I'll switch this back to solid. And obviously, we can begin to modulate this in different ways. So if I plug an LFO in, I'll speed that up a little bit. So we start to get some animation. And then as we go and switch through different gradients, start to get different effects. So keying is one way of animating these gradients. Another way to use these gradients is to sum them with different signals. So in this case, I'm gonna take that same gradient, plug it into the through input on a passage, We'll take a look at what that looks like. And that should look just like the gradient. Perfect. Just that bias. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an LFO. And I'm going to balance these controls until we're getting a good bit of movement in there. 
So what we're doing now is we're adding in, so we take those black areas and push them up to white and take the white areas and push them into super whites. Um, so this is kind of neat, but it doesn't really do a lot on its own. From here, we could take it in turn again into a keyer. And this is going to give us another level of modulation. So as you can see, we're getting a slightly different effect than we were getting before. But where this really shines is if we start putting it into something like staircase. So as I go to source, plug in the source, plug out there. So now that animation from summing with the LFO, we're really starting to see. Um, and as we adjust these controls, we get a lot of different effects. This is also a great way to prep a ramp before putting it into something like a navigator or a shape changer. So here by flipping through some different ramps, you start to get really different effects. And obviously you can modulate these controls on the shape changer as well. So maybe let's go into frequency control with another LFO and start to get some really, really wild patterns. And you can begin to see how you could uh, tie these into more complicated patches. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just doing black and white, but you can also take different outputs from different passage channels and mix them in. Um, you could take, if you have a color chords, for example, you could take a key from one and a staircase from another, and maybe just a third pendulum channel and start to blend in all kinds of different colors. Um, but you can see how easy it is to get these really, really complicated patterns we're really not using that many modules or that many patch cables to get these really pretty sophisticated results. And when you're designing your own gradients, which again, you can do using Photoshop, Illustrator, or whatever software you might be familiar with, it's good to conceptualize how you want this animation to move. Uh, basically, everything's going to move from black to white or from white to black, no matter what technique you use. So mapping those things out thoughtfully will give you better results. Some of these gradients have different shapes, uh, circles and squares kind of divided into different sections of the image. Even really simple shapes sometimes work extremely well. And coinciding with the release of this video, We'll also be releasing three gradient packs, including all the ones you see in this video. These are great starting points for creating your own gradients, or just for using right out of the box. These gradients are formatted so you can drag and drop them straight into the memory palace, but you can also play them back using any other means that you may have, whether it's a computer's video output into the visual cortex, or you burn them onto a DVD, whatever you got. And now finally, we'll look at how to use these ramps through the memory palace. Gradient images are a perfect source for the memory palace. The built-in window keyer is the perfect thing for adding animation to these kinds of gradient ramps. So I'm going to bring the width all the way down so we just get a really thin key. Remember, the way that the keyer on the memory palace works is it looks at the range from black to white, and the width controls how much of that you want to key out. So in this case, we're taking a very, very little slice, and then the center is going to move where that key image comes through. So I'll set width up a little bit bigger just so we can actually see something. So as we move the center up and down, you see it starts to kind of go through those ramps. So I'm going to turn scan on just so that that's automated. We're already getting these really beautiful ripples. And as I go through some of these different ramps, you start to see you get some really cool possibilities for motion and animation. And this is without really using any of the motion controls on the memory palace. But well, once we start integrating those into the patch, things are going to start to get much more complicated much more quickly. As I bring width up, we can go from lines to more solid shapes. Back down. Turn on tile and reflection just for fun. Get a little zoom out going. And you start to see how these ramps can become a really powerful part of your memory palace workflow. So again, we have three new collections of ramps for you to play with on your own with your memory palace. Gradient ramps really are a fantastic tool for a small system or a large system. And I'd encourage you to try making your own. These ramps are great for live performances because they let you keep one pretty complex patch 
and basically change the whole thing in a push of a button by just switching to a new gradient. This is one of the things I always loved using them for. Additionally, they're a little bit easier to play back than video sources, and I also like that they don't have built-in timing. All of the animation and all of the modulation basically comes from the video synth system itself, not from the image. And that's really flexible if you're looking to tempo sync stuff, if you're performing with a band, or if you're just jamming along with your own synthesizers. So hopefully you try these included packs, have some fun, and make some great ants of your own. Thank you for watching, and let us know what other tips and tricks you'd like to see in the comments for this video.